peak. The clouds of ramble part. <laughs> Here's the Dean Windass Hall of Fame. Oh, you couldn't, right? couldn't have done it. Couldn't do it without you, Pete. I'm telling you, wouldn't want to either. No. Oh dear, oh dear. Who have we got this week, Ramblers? Who have we got this week? I'll tell you who we got this week. We got the man who's just retired. Christian Vieri. Oh, good choice. Mm. Thanks. Good choice. Thank you, son. Man's a legend. Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beckoning him. He's not in yet. You're yeah. taunting him. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Christian Vieri recently um, announced his retirement. You're just a live story and a bunch of mundane facts away from being in the dim wires when that's all the phone. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. Um, apology accepted. <laughs> um, uh, yes, Christian Vieri. Uh, oh, my giddy aunt. A prolific and uh, very powerful centre forward. Um, not your maybe stereotypical Italian centre forward, would you say? Um, I, I think it, I'd like to think. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan of Christian Vieri's work. Yes. And at, at his peak, um, which I'm sure you'll come onto it into, he was the complete striker. Ooh. He was brilliant. He was shout. brilliant. Well, he was uh, he was born in um, Italy. Now, I I wasn't sure. I thought he was born in Australia because I know he's got links to Australia. Mm. But he was born in Italy, in Bologna, to be precise. But his family moved to Australia in. Um, it was sorry. He was born on the July the twelfth, nineteen seventy three. Six years after. Summer of Love. Yes, indeed. It's always worth a mention. Um, Pete, come on. What's yeah, he won? Summer of Love. No. The sperm race. Yeah, there you go. Thank yeah. you. Which um, is kind of the love race, if you believe in that. <laughs> that's true, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so he, they moved to Australia when he was uh, four years old in 1977, and they moved back to Italy in 1988. Um, his father, Roberto Vieri, was a pro footballer and played for, amongst others, uh, Sampdoria, Juventus and Roma. Mm -hmm. Fix. Nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's your, it is an opinion, if nothing more. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, and his brother, um, he was a professional footballer. Currently, he still is. He's currently playing in Serie B. His brother's played for Australia. He has yeah. six caps for Australia. Yeah. I mean, it was a, a couple Isn't of years ago. Massimiliano now. or something. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said that. Because I, I certainly I, wasn't going to try. I'm a big fan of the Vieri family in general. Well, they sound like a good bunch. Yeah. Um, Isn't Christian Vieri really into his cricket as well? He is. Because right. I, I, I can remember um, when they were because he speaks really good English. Well, of course. Yeah. And um, he said that with a slight, with a bit of an Aussie accent, as you'd yeah, expect. Of he said his he said his sport, all time sporting hero is Alan Border. The great uh, Australian Is cricket right? captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not marvelous. a big fan of Italian cricket. Very defensive. No, yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like what you've done there, very James. Slow. Um, he was. Uh, he started his professional career with um, Torino. And he didn't play many games with them, a handful of games there. And he moved down to Serie B for a few seasons. He's but had more clubs than Nick Fowler, though, Christian Vieri. Yes, he has indeed. Um, the other sports theme is just raging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stop me. Because I'll tell you what, when I get going. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're only three steps behind us. <laughs> um, he uh, eventually caught the eye of, of Juventus. He played for, so I should say, he played for uh, Pisa, uh, Ravenna, and uh, Venice, and uh, Venetia, Atalanta. That is. Well, Venetia, yeah, but yeah. it's Venice is is how us Brits would say it. Um, and eventually uh, he caught the eye of Juventus, and they signed him from Atalanta. And really, when he signed for Juventus, this would this was the start of. Um, Quite some journey for the big men. Yeah. Um, the season he signed for Juventus, uh, that's when he uh, earned his uh, first international cap. And he played a handful of games for Italy that season. And he was actually bought, really, to replace Fabrizio Ravinelli, mm -hmm. who went to Middlesbrough, of course. So big shoes to fill. Um, but whilst he was at Juventus, that's when he became a real top player. His scoring record wasn't fantastic for Juventus. It was, it was OK. But but he really, uh, his performances were, were very much... Uh, Catching the attention, just a he was a colossus. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Well, I think I think the the, the the potential really started coming out, and people saw actually. Hang on a minute, this this chap can play. This boy's a different class. Yeah, but effectively. Again, only he was only at Juventus for a year, and Atletico Madrid came in for him, and I think he was bought for. Um, it was about twenty million dollars. Uh, it was sort of fourteen million pounds, I yeah. think. And uh, he was only twenty-three. Um, and at the time, that was uh, he was the world's third most expensive player. He had a brilliant time at Atletico. Didn't and this was really the beginning of, of, I suppose you would call his golden period. In, in when he was in Madrid, he scored thirty-four goals in thirty-eight games, and he won the uh, 
Pichichi uh, yeah. trophy as La Liga's top scorer with 24 goals and 24 24 league goals and 24 league games. Cracking. Mm. That ain't bad, is it? Even Jesus Gill would be pleased with that. Well, <laughs> absolutely. As he probably employed them as his own personal servant as well. <laughs> <laughs> Score goals yeah. around him for his enjoyment. <laughs> yeah. Stick up nets everywhere. Was that one goal he scored for every manager they had <laughs> <laughs> in, in that season? <laughs> Um, well, this was all, of course, in the run-up to the 98 World Cup, uh, where he featured heavily for Italy. He scored five goals in five matches, and he played up front with Alessandro Del Piero and Roberto Baggio. Obviously not at the same time, but, um, you know, but... Oh, Del Piero and Vieri, you're having that yeah. with Del Baggio as well. Y- you know, that's wonderful stuff. They um, they reached the quarterfinals and were put out on penalties, but he was second joint top scorer with uh, Gabriel Battistuta, mm-hmm. who, of course... Uh, He's, He's already, already in. in already in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, behind and, and obviously Davos Suka was the top scorer at that World Cup. So after the World Cup, he was on the move again uh, back to Italy with Lazio. Um, he had a decent season with Lazio, um, and uh, he won the Cup Winners' Cup, the last ever Cup Winners' Cup. Yeah. Awesome to Demon Hall of Fame. He can't move. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to memories. Feel, he's very gonna, memories. He's going yeah. to feel at home. He scored a lovely header in the final, yeah. um, if you remember. Once again, um, is it fair to say he was one of the best headers of the ball? Of all time, I think you'd be on the safe of the ball. I think. Yeah, well, that would be the proper word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him and him and uh, there, there was that time when him and Oliver Beerhoff were just yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. The neck muscles on them two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like horses. The yeah, pair of them. yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> He only spent one season with Lazio, as uh, he'd only a journeyman. spent... journeyman. He was a journeyman. I mean, that was his eighth club in eight years. He, he or eight seasons, sorry. He considered the change to be as good as a rest. Mm. <laughs> what you, you know, we Better c- to be busy than bored, Marcus, as they say. Again, <laughs> you know, an opinion at best. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, but anyway, th- this is when he moved from Lazio to Inter Milan for a world record transfer fee at the time for £32 million. Pounds. Mm-hmm. And this was, of course, when he, uh, to Inter, he, this was the first time he'd spent more than one season at a club. He stayed there for about six years. And, I mean, we were talking playing up front with, with Del Piero and, and Baggio at the World Cup. Here at Inter, he was to play up front with Ronaldo. Cracking. That's not bad, is it? You'd have that. Trying to get the goals from Ronaldo. Because so, yeah. yeah. he scored a canny few. Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, yeah. He did, yeah. I mean, playing, playing centre-half against those two would be like doing 12 rounds with Mike Tyson. <laughs> you'd be oh, bruised what? and battered and naked. Yeah. Just to keep his bad back picking yeah. the ball out the back yeah. of the <laughs> <laughs> He missed Euro 2000 due to injury, but he did play in uh, World Cup 2002. See, another player with, with some, some knee injury problems, some knee problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, he scored four goals in four games for Italy, um, but they went out in the second round to South Korea in the famous um, Barry Davis bit of commentary because they will, will not, not learn. learn yeah. um, <laughs> and then another great player he played up front with uh, for Inter was Hernan Crespo. God. He's had some partners. He mm. has had some, Well, <laughs> we'll move on to that in a bit as well. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> do, do you know I watched that, uh, that, uh, that match where they went out to South Korea? Ridiculous. Uh, yeah. If I looked to my right, I could see the, the match on a telly. If I looked to my left, I could see a giraffe. I watched it at a zoo. Did you? Did. Oh, did yes, you I did. I was really hoping you were say I watched it in like South Africa or something. <laughs> yeah. actual, no, I know. watched it. it was I a, watched yeah. it in Newcastle! <laughs> <laughs> Why were they showing it in a zoo? As I worked there. Well, the animals. Like, oh, like, cabin. Oh, so. <laughs> Everyone, it was know. me and the two giraffe keepers watching it. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? Uh, I think one was called Brian. <laughs> Costa called Brian. Brian, loud, <laughs> Brian, and, keepers. Brian and Ryan. <laughs> um, in 2002-2003 season, he scored 24 goals in 23 games and, and was top scorer <laughs> in Serie A. Um, in Euro 2004, it was a bit of a write-off for Italy. They, they went out in the first round and, and Vieira didn't score. Um, but as his time went on with Inter, um, one of the coaches who was there, Alberto Zaccaroni, uh, they had a bit of a falling out, and and um, and Vieri was particularly unhappy when they sold Hernan Crespo to Chelsea. He also picked up an injury in a Champions League match against Valencia, and that kind of took its toll on him a bit. He wasn't as sharp as he had been. Um, but another great player he played with uh, towards his uh, end of his time at Inter was Adriano. Oh yeah. So he's played with some the absolute emperor. The emperor. <laughs> yeah. In July 2005, Vieri and uh, Inter came to a mutual agreement to terminate his contract, and he went across the city to um, Milan uh, to play for the Rossoneri. That happens a weird amount, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Italy, mm. it's always happening. Mm. Yeah, they always, they always trade uh, different clubs in the, in the same league. I wish it happened a bit more. Rivals and stuff. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, but he wasn't a regular starter for, for Milan, and just after, I think it was about there for about six months, he joined uh, Monaco in, he, in France. He, but he was getting on by then, and he had had yeah. his injuries as well. We had, yeah. Um, and, uh, again, another serious knee injury uh, whilst playing for Monaco uh, ruled him out of the 2006 World Cup. Whether he'd have gone, he probably would have gone, probably wouldn't have started, though. I mean, they didn't miss him in the end, did they? Clearly not, Luke. Mm. Clearly not. It would have been a shame, because it would have been nice for him to get a uh, World Cup winner's medal. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't have it all. You can't. No. No. Um, at the end of uh, the summer of 2006, he returned to Atalanta and signed a one-year contract with them. With uh, It was just quite a small wage. It was only €1,500 per month, although he was to earn €100,000 for every goal he scored. <laughs> That's how all contracts should work. Yeah. <laughs> Give an incentive, isn't it? Well, the, 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 the chairman... Um, Ivan uh, Ruggeri said if things go well Vieri will cost me uh, 2 million euros he scored 2 goals and 7 substitute appearances but you know 2 yeah. goals that was over 200, uh, 200 grand he, he popped up at Blackburn in the summer didn't he well yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah he didn't um, they didn't uh, give him a contract extension because he didn't play very much for Atalanta and then he was signed on a, another one year deal for Fiorentina um, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. It was a shame seeing him play for Fiorentini because he couldn't really move. You know, he just <laughs> yeah. didn't. It was a shame to see, as you said, Luke, when he was playing for Inter. You know, there wasn't there wasn't there was no finer striker anywhere in the world in my opinion. Well, he's oft, often considered to be one of Italy's greatest and, and purest strikers of, of recent times, and and he's one of Italy's most prolific World Cup goal scorers. Mm. And to see this guy who's a bit a bit weighty, sort of bumbling yeah. around the park, wasn't because he had the know. physique to, that would be that would render himself sort of quite vulnerable to putting on a few pounds. That's, That's why. Right. But at his peak, he wasn't just a battering ram. He was just a oh a, no, real, he had everything, you know. And when I heard that he was training with Sam Adams at Blackburn, a part of me died in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was pleased that he made the right decision and signed for him because I think you don't want to see a, a great man, one of the world, you know, one of this generation's best strikers, in my opinion, mm. just stuck up front on his own yeah. with a bad neck because the ball's coming up to him and hitting him from all Reduced angles. Reduced to being told what to do by Sam Allardyce. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that it, as it well. It was like it? watching Beersley at Hartlepool. Yeah. The, the, only, yeah, yeah, bet, the yeah. only thing they have in common is the amount of pies they like eating. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, well, absolutely. Um, I mean, it, you know, we've talked a lot about his football career, obviously, there, but it, it can't be um, overlooked that, that he was quite well known to being a bit of a party animal. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> had a string of model girlfriends. Yeah, had an eye for the ladies. He really did. But if you look at him Two now... Eyes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at him now... Three eyes. He three. Looks, uh, oh, I resisted that. Okay, okay sorry. Yeah. He, he looks a bit like value, that Nikolai Value of that box that David Hayes had <laughs> to fight. He's got a skin hair, he's got like a real granite <laughs> face. Oh, that's another thing. Vieri, um, great array of, of haircuts. Oh, yeah. Over yeah. the years, yeah, yeah. Not a style he couldn't pull off. No. Um, and uh, he also started a fashion line called Sweet Years a few years ago um, with Paolo Maldini. <laughs> oh, cracking, I'm once, interested. Once again, he'll yeah. be able to carry on doing that in the Dean Wells Hall of Fame because yeah. Paolo's in there. Yeah. Um, Paolo is a Paolo's beautiful, beautiful public man. face. They'll have a yeah. kit in there now, wouldn't they? From <laughs> yeah, they, they'll be making a kit right now. <laughs> he also um, he also uh, had uh, had a line of condoms called uh, a cool uh, blue sweet years uh, limited edition. <laughs> um, uh, he said, uh, I accepted to lend my image for free. On well, they were, they were on the, the condom. condom. The, well, I, I, I can only hope. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> Imagine that. What, what's that? It's Christian Vieri. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> on the front of the speech bill, got, you're in the box. Yeah. Score. <laughs> Having the face of another man on your condom. <laughs> bit weird, isn't it? Oh, he, he was predatory, love. <laughs> predatory. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure if it was on the actual Johnny itself. Like maybe on the box or something but he said um, he did say I accept to lend my image for free he said our brand appeals particularly to young people who often have risky sexual behaviours <laughs> unfortunately the Ministry of Health prevents me from appearing in an official campaign because I am famous but I truly believe in this project mm. morals GP <laughs> yeah morals. questionable morals <laughs> <laughs> paper well, thin morals <laughs> but morals nonetheless latex thin <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for her pleasure uh, <laughs> Um, and mine. <laughs> Oi, you're giving him a good ribbon there, I tell you. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, but anyway, I should uh, I should tell you some of the things he won. He won Serie A. Um, he won the Cup Winners' Cup. Um, and he won the uh, Under-21 European Championships. Oh, um, and, yeah, and as I say, he was top scorer in La Liga and, and Serie A. Italian Football of the Year in uh, 99 and 2002, amongst others. Mm.
So then he won uh, Serie A at a decent time as well when yeah, the football exactly. was top class. Absolutely, Correct. Pete. It's worth noting. Um, and also, another one of his uh, achievements was he was one of the uh, the first uh, football stars to join um, the FIFA for SOS Children's Villages. He's an ambassador for them, and he joined that in November 99. And he said, wherever it is a question of holding out a helping hand to children and young people in need, I am always happy to play a part. Well, we're very happy to invite you into the team when yeah, that's all the play. Yeah, play a part, yeah. Play my part. <laughs> what a wonderful you man. Ugh. If you get one of those condoms and wear it, it'll kind of be like... A posh you, part. You know, you can, <laughs> you can feel the rest in yourself. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the show. I do hope you've had a lovely time. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, the uh, email address is podcast at thefootballramble.com. And please do swing by our website, which is thefootballramble.com. There's blogs, there's ramble tubes, there's YouTube clips of what we've been talking about, and all sorts. You'll have a, you'll have a lovely time there. Say goodbye, Pete. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Luke. Bye. Say goodbye, James or Jim. Bye. Uh, we're all off to raise our children properly. Goodbye. <laughs>